Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back, one and all, to Draven Who Games 8 Bit of Fun, our weekly recap of everything gaming. Uh, so today, today we have a special, awesome President's Day special. Yeah, I know, it's gonna be awesome. Super long episode, 10 minute devlog with the music developer himself. Uh, so that's pretty cool. He's gonna tell us all about his music and how he makes it. Um, and then also we have, of course, our huge round of news. Uh, there's actually not that much this week, but since I have waited off, there is a lot, kind of, um, nothing huge, but there's still a, f a little bit of news, so we're gonna get right into that. And then also, we are bringing you three, count them, three game reviews slash recommendations this week. So without further ado, let's get into our Super President's Day special, 8-Bit of Fun. Hit the intro. Okay, so without further ado, let's get right into this week's news. Uh, so first, this is kind of going from the the most recent to the last, like the uh, earliest in the week. First, Hyrule Warriors card shop is getting a fix in the definitive edition. Uh, I've never played Hyrule Warriors, so uh, I didn't know that was a problem. But it's being fixed. Uh, I don't really know what any of it means. You can go check out Game Explains video. I'm sure a lot of you are subscribed to them anyway. But, yeah, go check that out because I can't really give you much details because I don't really know a whole lot about the game except I'm totally going to buy it when it comes to Switch. <laughs> So, yeah. Then also, there is a rumor that a Spyro remake will be coming uh, very soon. Uh, for Some people are just saying PS4. Some people are saying Switch, PS4, Xbox, all the goods. Uh, it's really unclear right now. I would have to guess it's only going to come to PS4 because PS4 likes to do that a lot. But who knows? Um, who knows? It's just kind of... Mystery, isn't it? But I think it'd be cool. Uh, the only Spyro games I've played is I think there was one that I may have played on, like, I don't know, maybe like GameCube or PlayStation 1 or something. I can't really remember, but uh, I know I've, I think it was for PlayStation 1, I think it was the original. I uh, put a little bit of that, and then I played a lot of Skylanders uh, growing up, so. Yeah, I, I do know Spyro slightly. Um, uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Bayonetta 1 and 2 has dropped on the Switch this week. Pretty cool. Uh, I have not picked those up and probably won't pick them up right now. Maybe in the future. But right now, I'm saving up for that sweet Kirby. So, uh, waiting March 16th, man. March 16th, we get, we get that new Kirby game for the Switch. Super hyped for that. Saving up my money. Saving up my precious dollars. And we're going to get that. It's going to be pretty cool. But Bayonetta, I definitely want to play it eventually because I've heard it's an amazing game. But just not this month. Um, Minecraft has gotten a 1.13 snapshot. No, we don't talk a whole lot about Minecraft here on the channel uh, anymore. I mean, Draven, the Draven Hooniverse used to be all about Minecraft. And this had like two episodes of it on it. Um, but we don't really do that anymore. But I still... I don't play it, like, I haven't played it in, like, months, but it's still, it's still cool. I don't hate Minecraft like a lot of people do. I think it's an awesome game. I grew up on it. I've been a player since 2013, so represent, um, I, I was there before it got cringy, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, I still love that game. 1.13 has added a new mob as well as a turtle, so heck yeah, turtles are always awesome, so. Cool. Um, next up, Labo. This is a pretty big one. We've been waiting a while for this one. Nintendo Labo has actually showed us what its games are going to be. And the robot kit still seems like a bit of a ripoff. Um, not going to lie, after seeing what the variety kit has to offer, the robot really seems like they're dropping the ball on that one. Um, for instance, the variety kit, the house has a little Tomodachi-like pet in it. Uh, it's a weird looking little cat m monster thing. Uh, pretty cool. You could play like what looks to be like a Donkey Kong Country minecart game with it. Uh, you can flood the house, play with it, all that good junk. Have a portal that flies it through. Pretty cool. 
piano. You can use different sounds. You can play the piano. And there's also, like, acoustic mode where you can set a Joy-Con on top of, like, a box or something. And then it'll vibrate it or whatever. Um, RC Car has a camera functionality. And you can change the way, like, how fast it moves and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Fish... Fish seems, I mean, it's a fishing game. What can I say? It's a fishing game. I mean, but, but what's cool about it is that you can make your own fish and put them in there. So that's pretty, pretty neato. Uh, and then also the bike game, which I think looks the coolest. Basically a Mario Kart, if it was just bikes, it looks really neat. And you can even create your own tracks either by flying a bike through the air. Or you can scan something like your hand and it'll raise up the terrain and make it a track. Pretty awesome, pretty creative. I must applaud Nintendo. They have they have blown all my expectations out of the water. So good job. But the robot, the robot needs to sit down and think about what it's done. It is eighty dollars, and uh, I mean it seems cool, but eighty dollars seems a little bit like a stretch when you're getting that much for seventy. Uh, the robot can go through a bunch of different levels. You can wreck towns, fight aliens. You can become a flying tank. You can fly around the city. You can just become a normal tank. Really nothing we haven't already seen. Um, at least in that aspect. There does seem to be some challenge stages where you can get some cool power-ups. Um, you can customize your robot, so that's pretty cool. You can like make it different colors. I'm all about customization. Which is why I'm actually excited about that fish, but I don't know. I don't know about this one. It has like a sound effect studio where you can put the switch inside the backpack of the robot. And when you move it makes noises, but that seems a little useless. Like why would you do that without the game? I mean, I don't know. Uh, and then also, probably the coolest part, if it wasn't for one part of it, is an awesome robot battling mode where you and a friend can freaking beat the crap out of each other as giant robots. And oh my god, this looks awesome. Only problem is that your friend also has to spend $80 on the cardboard kit. Uh, yeah. Boop, boop, burn up. They really dropped the ball on that one. I mean, I understand that you need another cardboard kit, but... <sighs> It just seems that if one person has the software that you should be able to go out and buy, I don't know, separate cardboard. I mean, that stuff can break easily, too. We've gotten reports that it's just normal cardboard. So it really seems like they should sell some replacement cardboard kits. Uh, so if you already have the game and you just want to rebuild it or build one for a friend, like if you have a second pair of Joy-Cons, then just give them that in the kit and you're good to go. But uh, another friend having to drop $80 is a little steep, or you having to drop another $80, which seems absolutely ridiculous. I don't know. I don't think... I mean, the robot is awesome. I'd love it. If it dropped itself down to 70, that would be worth it, because the variety kit has a lot, and that's 70. Um, but the robot just seems like nothing compared to the $70 kit, and I'm like, Nintendo, what the crap? <laughs> but, so I'm asking for the variety kit, not the robot. I mean, if by a miracle I have enough to buy the robot kit eventually, cool. But it's not at the top of my list. Anyway, that's gone on quite a bit. Next, uh, we have uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. We got a new trailer for that. I've never played a Kingdom Hearts. I've heard they're really good, though. Uh, and yeah, it was like a Monster Inc. things. There's like some furries and crap in it. But good, moving on, I don't know anything about that to judge it. So, cool. Disney stuff. Always nice to have. Uh, since Disney Infinity's dead, R.I.P. Disney Infinity, man. That game was awesome. And it's still sad that they killed it. Um... Sorry, just, let's have a moment of silence for Disney Infinity, man. Okay, that was enough silence, and it probably people died as left. Um, uh, next, The Blob is getting a remaster on the Switch. I think it's actually The Blob 2 skin. Uh, it was a Wii game. It's, been, it's getting an HD remake on the Switch. Really cool. Always love seeing new things come to the Switch, especially Wii games, because I want to see how they run. Uh, it's going to be remastered, so it'll look nicer and uh, pretty exciting. Never played a D-Blob, but it looks really cool. looks really fun. looks kind of Splatoon-esque with the coloration thing. I think it's you and a friend. You go around coloring, like painting the town. So 
Uh, seems really neat. It seems like a lot of fun for multiplayer, anyway. And, uh, pretty exciting. Next up, all, all hope that you had for Hearthstone coming to the Switch is dashed. For the Hearthstone team has said that they're not putting it on the Switch, so don't get your hopes high, so just stop now. Um... And finally, Pearl and Marina Amiibo have been announced. They were announced just after I freaking released my last 8-bit of fun. Uh, so Pearl and Marina Amiibo, pretty cool, I guess. I haven't played Splatoon 2 since, uh, what was the last Splatfle <laughs> Splatfest I uh, played? I honestly can't remember. Maybe that ketchup and mayonnaise. I feel like there's one after that. Maybe the Halloween one? Yeah, I, I really, yeah, I need to play that game again. Um... But anyway, with that, let's go ahead and go to Past Me with the Devlog. It's pre-recorded. It's awesome. Hit it, Past Me, on a different microphone. Okay, so welcome to everybody's favorite part of this amazing podcast here that we call it a bit of fun. This is a pre-recorded uh, little segment of Devlog, the only place where we talk about the development of Looter's World. Uh, as you know, I'm head of the thing, Draven, and, but that's not all, I'm not alone today, we have our, our person here, our head director, whatever you want to call him, of music, and his name is Jack, and he's here today, so say hello. Hello. So yeah, that's Jack, uh, and, uh, he's gonna tell you a little bit about, like, like, what we use to make our music, and, uh, the... The development process, because we need to sound official on this show. So go ahead and tell our lovely viewing audience here, well, listening audience, it's a podcast after all, uh, how how you make your music. So yeah. Um, we use beepbox.co, not .com, and it is, you know, like 8-bit chiptune. It's very fun. And... So basically the process is um I sometimes I get out like a you know like a instrument keyboard and I make a I just start you know banging out playing random notes until it sounds like it's a you know a melody that could be cool. So you know uh, I made the song Jungle Prance and that actually um the beginning you know first four measures have that um melody I, that was the melody that just randomly I played on the keyboard, and I was like, oh, that sounds cool. So I use it. But um, the first step is if you don't have your melody, uh, what I usually do is I start with the beat and the percussion. I just play around with it until it sounds really cool, and, you know, this is jamming. But um, then I, you know, make sure the melodies and, you know, all the other instruments work with the percussion because if they don't it just kind of sounds weird but um so yeah usually i end up you know having you know the melody for like four bars and i add stuff and four bars later i add some more stuff you know along with percussion that's a big part um recently i made a track where you know it sounds i made the percussion sound like it's a thunder which is well i think it was pretty cool but I don't know. <laughs> you guys will be getting that track uh, probably today, or you might have gotten it yesterday. I'm not really sure, because you guys are getting this Saturday, but that's tomorrow at the time of this part of the recording. Um, so you may get that either tonight for us, for us recording this, or today of you listeners. So yeah, wow. it's called Storm, and uh, and then there will be another one out next to it, which is my thing it actually sounds good this time yeah it's very good i like it a lot and uh i can't remember my name oh yeah battle of the blips is what it's called so so check those out either on this very channel or you can hit up hit up the game jolt so yeah. i made another track but i mean it was okay i still have to edit it because it was kind of weird but um mainly you made i go through um in the tracks that I make you can kind of hear I go through you know different like transitions to parts so that you know it's always changing and it's not just you know a four measure loop because I mean that would be weird and kind of you know plain but um yeah it's pretty fun to you know just kind of play around with stuff I encourage you to do that because it's just yeah it's it's a lot of fun if you're if you're in band 
and you are really interested in like music theory, I highly recommend it. <laughs> Sorry, that was a voice crack. Don't worry, Jack. It happens all the time when I'm recording these things, man. It's it's mm-hmm. fine. My voice is too quiet. You might have not even heard it. <laughs> anyway, we're not supposed to be talking about voice cracks. We're talking about beautiful noises. I don't have anything else to say. Yeah. Other than, um, so far I've made three tracks, and Draven has made three tracks. Heck yeah. And I'm, we're gonna actually make another one. Yeah, we are. I can't wait because, I mean, it's fun. Like I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so yeah, I mean, I know my thing... See, you just mash on the keyboard and then figure it out from there. With me, I literally just I I get on beatbox and just click stuff and see what happens. That's my I mean, that's, that's my way of developing music. That's why you're in charge and not it's me. It's kind of like the equivalent, though. I mean, we're both playing around with random notes. Yeah, one just takes longer. Yeah, clicking around is very time consuming. Probably. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I never actually watch you compose yeah. music. I, oh, that's should, my cat. We should do Aww, that. Oh, Katie, do you need to get out of my room? Yeah, I'll go get it. Okay, yeah, home. you. I'll entertain our guests. Our guests. We need to let my cat out of my room because we closed the door so it would be quiet when we recorded. But my cat's like, please let me out. I need to eat. Okay. You know, like cats do. Uh... So, so yeah, uh, we've also been working on some sprites, or at least I have, because that's my job here. Mm-hmm. I work on I work on story and sprites and coding. Um, I, I tried to work on a, a sprite of an octopus twice, but I haven't finished either of them. <laughs> so yeah, like with my sprites, we uh, so far you've you guys have already seen the cartridge, the main character, and one of the enemy concepts. Um, we've recently created, I've, well, I've created the, um, possible ride in the game, um, as well as another collectible besides the cartridge, which will be the disc, so, get hyped for that, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and then also a possible, uh, shadow version of the main character, because I want this thing to have some self-aware humor and crack a joke about, hey, it's a shadow, because, like, that's stereotypical in video games or wow. something. So I, I want that to happen. I want there to be that sort of stuff uh, going on. Um, but yeah, I think. Okay. But yeah, I think that's. I think that's about it. Um, if you have anything else to add, uh, um, if you want, if you can't, if you think you can keep the audience entertained for a little while, I could um, pull up the the bad track that I made, just a little tiny snippet of it. Oh yeah, like you can go. Seconds. Yeah, you can okay. go. And, well, I mean, I might as well plug my uh i might as well plug my thingy here you got that if you got that ready here uh go to gamejolt.com we're not sponsored by them but they're awesome you can find many free indie games and it's a great way to get out there and start making your games check us out over there banana 7 studios is our name and looters world is our game literally uh so uh, so you can just look us look up looter and you should find it under the dev logs category cuz we have no playable demo as of right now uh jack actually just saw the only playable part of it that we have and uh, it's not anything to brag about yet oh uh i pulled it up if okay, you okay yeah go want ahead. to kind of see go um, ahead and play that track this jack. is like pretty much the highlight like um you'll hear a few notes in the beginning it's like it sounds Aww. really bad, but because in the beginning it's Whee! like supposed to be like scary or something. Spooky, <laughs> scary um, skeleton. But yeah, so it kind of sounds ugly because it's supposed to. So yeah, just listen. So that's pretty good. I mean, yeah, that, that part, part. That's part's pretty. So yeah, good. I'm sorry. I pause it. We could probably just cut that out. No, it's 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 fine, bro. Of the pause. We don't do any editing here. That was actually part of that was a legitimate voice crack, and part of it wasn't. Um, oh. we don't we don't do a whole lot of editing. It's pretty chill, bro. If something messes up, then oh well, it's fine. Uh, unless I'm, I forgot to write my notes like that one time I did, and then I had to stop it. Oh. 
<laughs> anyway, for the newsreel category, I forgot to write down notes. Uh, but yeah. But um, yeah, that was the main thing. It was the beginning is kind of slow. I don't know really how to get it to be faster and still, you know, be like yeah. You know, like it. I'm just trying to make a track that. Reminds me of um, the Bowser's Castle in, you know, Super Mario Brothers, like the original one. Yeah. It was kind of dark and spooky, but it was also pretty slow, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that's about it. As you know, this episode is the super special, uh, that's what I'm calling it now, because you're basically getting two episodes. Just Devlog is like a whole other podcast entirely, like... You know, it's pretty, it's pretty good, uh, because we have our special guest, so, so yeah, it's gonna be an extra special, I don't know, maybe 20 minute episode, so you guys are getting lucky here, uh, we'll call it the devlog special, I guess, I don't know, I'm thinking about this the day before I even record the rest of the podcast, uh, but, I'm sorry if I just spit all over you, Jack. No, okay, no, okay. it must have been your computer. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah, remember, to, again, check out Game Jolt, they're awesome over there, GameJolt.com. Always good. You can go and follow us and see all of our good junk there. You can go always to Draven Who Games on Facebook. You can get all the updates on actual YouTube videos. Uh, and, I mean, and you know, game stuff, of course. And remember to subscribe for the more of the music and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say anything else because future Draven's going to take it back away with his game review of the week, his game spotlight. Uh, and he'll plug all the rest of that stuff at the end, but... Uh, thank you for listening in to our devlog with the Jack here, and uh, goodbye, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you, past me. Uh, I know, that's getting pretty cringy now, I bet. Um, anyway, we have a three for a uh, of game reviews, so, yeah. We'll get the unrelated one out of the way first. Poi, it's an excellent game for the Nintendo Switch. I picked it up physically at GameStop for its price reduction of 20 bucks, and it is well worth it. It looks sort of like Hat in Time, and it, it's a 3D platformer collectathon sort of thing. You collect, uh, ex- uh, I think it's got Explorer medallions, and it's actually really fun. Uh, the characters feel really good. Jumping feels really satisfying, doing like triple jumps and crazy stuff, it's really fun, and although the game isn't that visually appealing, I guess, I don't, it's not like impressive visually, but it has a cute style, and it really works, and I feel like a lot of people be scared away, because it looks like a kid's game, but it does not play like a kid's game, I mean, yeah, the enemies are extremely easy to beat, um, and yes, the bosses are, like, take two seconds, but overall, the game is really worth it for 20 bucks. You can get different hats and stuff and wear it. And, uh, if you actually pick up the physical version, it has HD rumble so it can and motion controls and stuff. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and also, it comes with a soundtrack and an art book if you buy the physical Explorer's Edition. I think it's only sold at GameStop, so go check that out. I know our local GameStop has it in stock for 20 bucks. so... And that's not even pre-owned, that's just its normal price, so go pick it up. It's a really nice buy, and it's a small indie publisher like myself, so cool. Uh, anyway, so now next to the, now here's the big ones. The big boys that are all connected. We got Kirby Triple Deluxe and Kirby Planet Robobot. Uh, first one we'll talk about, because, you know, it's a trilogy, I mean, well, there's two games, so... We'll start with the first one that came out. Triple Deluxe. Uh, I've not played qu- quite a bit of this one yet. Uh, I just picked it up last night, so haven't gotten a whole lot of playtime with it yet. But overall, it's really fun. It's more the same from Kirby, except he now has the Hypernova ability, which, oh my god, it's really fun. Uh, basically, you become a rainbow Kirby, and you just inhale literally everything into one big gulp. It is so satisfying to watch and so satisfying to do. Some people just like to see the world be eaten. Yeah. It really fulfills a random need that I didn't know I needed but until now. But I did. So, good job, Kirby Triple Deluxe. Also, <laughs> that name, Triple Deluxe 3D. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Um, 
but yeah, it's really fun. Uh, the main collectibles of the game are the sunstones, I believe is what they're called. So, you know, Pokemon. That's all I can think about when I think sunstone. I think Pokemon. Um, and then also the uh, keychains, which are pretty neat. They don't really do much, especially as the collectibles in the next game. Uh, Planet Robobot, there are stickers, and I'll talk about that later. Uh, but the keychains, you go around and collect them, and they're all previous pixel art from other Kirby games, and it's really quite neat. Uh, they go on this little cork board, and you can look at them, and you can read about them, and see what games they came from, and really nice bit of fan service. Uh, and you can even move them around, and they're on, like, the title screen and stuff, like, because that's this game's big gimmick is, ooh, look, you can, like, tilt it around and stuff. So, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, and then also the two other games, because these Kirby games both come with two other games with it, are Kirby Fighters, which is basically literal, well, it's literally just Smash Brothers, but only with different Kirbys. Um, and then DDD, uh, something like Drum Bash or something. I don't know, I think it's like a rhythm style game. I haven't played that one, I'm not really interested in it. Uh, and then also there is DDD Tour, which is a. Or as I like to call it, DD Detour. <laughs> uh, Ant Dude made that, made that for a second. I take that. That's not my own joke. <sighs> um, but anyway, DD Detour. Uh, I haven't played that one, but it's supposedly a real, a harder version of Kirby, where you basically have the hammer power up the whole time because that's King DD. It's just Kirby with a hammer. And <laughs> let me tell you, Kurt, he's going to be real buff. He's going to be a buff boy in the in Star Rallies, but we're not going to get onto that. I can see the fan art and fan frictions right now. I just can't. I can't deal with it. Um, And then also there's the arena, which is all the bosses cranked up to 11 and yada, yada, yada. You know the drill with these Kirby games if you played them before. That's where the next one comes into play. Kirby Planet Robobot, I wouldn't say throws the series on its head, but it spins it in another direction. Taking away from the cutesy, flowery, patchy, crafty looking style I had before. Excuse me. Uh, and uh, it's like all steampunk and robotic now. It's a oddly sort of dark storyline for a Kirby game. Basically the Holtman Works Company. Uh, just an evil corporation, laid a spaceship on Planet Popstar, and uh, turns everything into robots. It's pretty awesome. The game looks cool, plays fantastic, puzzles are fun, and you. Uh, the main collectibles in this are code cubes and stickers. Um, stickers are really cool because you can customize the big part of the game. The mech suits uh, of the game, which are really awesome. Just seeing Kirby absolutely blow the crap out of everything is amazing he just walks around that makes you like if you get the fire power up you can just blaze through everything oh my gosh it's beautiful but the stickers there's again just like the keychains there's golden and normal uh and these things are also a little bit of fan service and you can stick them on the arms of your mech pretty cool i know right um and then code cubes uh, again code cubes like the sunstones before allow you to get to the boss battle and it's just a cool collectible to have uh, I like, it just drives me insane when I don't get all of them. Uh, I'm going to probably replay through the levels. Because I'm close to beating Robobot. Um, uh, I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to have to go back to those levels and get those code cubes or it's going to drive me insane. I think that will be my first game that will 100%. Um, so yeah, it's really fun. There's really nothing else to be said there. It's a whole lot of fun. And uh, if I had to recommend... Triple Deluxe versus Robobot. Triple Deluxe is 20. Robobot is 40. So if you're on budget, go Triple Deluxe. I like Triple Deluxe. Uh, I mean, they're both really good in different aspects. Triple Deluxe is really good in that its mini games are also fun. Again, it's basically like you're getting a free copy of Smash Brothers in each, in each copy of the game, which is really cool, and especially for that price. Uh, and it's a really solid Kirby game, and yeah. Uh, and again, 20 bucks, can't really beat that, except I did, I got a, a dollar off, thanks to buying it pre-owned, um, 
But yeah, and then there's also, of course, the Planet Robobot, which is really cool because you have the mechs. It's the newest Kirby game. It has amiibo functionality, stickers, and uh, and the mini games are alright too. The mini games in that one, uh, again, you have the arena, uh, the true arena, which is an even harder version of it. Uh, Meta Knight. It made an, Meta Nightmare, I think is what it's called, or something like that. Uh, and it's a play, you get to play as Meta Knight through the uh, Robobot without any mechs or anything. Um, which Meta Knight, I think, is way cooler than DDD, but I don't know. It's debatable. Um, and then also you get 3D Rumble, which kind of sucks. <laughs> you get it, it sucks because you can, you can suck people up and eat them. And, yeah. I bet that joke's overused. Uh, and then. Uh, Kirby Team Fighters or Team... I can't remember what it's called. Those side games really don't do anything for me in, uh, in Robobot, but the main game itself is really addicting. So, I don't know. I might go Triple Deluxe if you have to pick one. Just because it's cheaper and the mini games are more fun. But overall, both are really solid games, and if you're looking for a fun little play on the 3DS, uh, both of them are highly recommended. And, uh, yeah, that's my, that's a wrap, guys. That's, we're finally done with this episode. I think it's, like, 30 minutes long, and I, I think that's fine, guys. It's the President's Day special. Uh, why, you may ask? I, because I recorded the, uh, I recorded the devlog, and it was, like, 10 minutes, and I might as well make it special, and then, like, what can I shove on it? Ooh, President's Day's coming up, or at least it's been... Yeah, I'm lazy. Um, and, uh, yeah. So thank you all for watching this ultra special podcast. Eight bit of fun extravaganza. President Day special. Super duper triple deluxe. Robobot. Poi blast. Whatever. Uh, remember to subscribe for more amazingly awesome content. Uh, also check out that new channel art. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, and, uh, remember to also follow us on Facebook. Haven't been posting there as much as I should, but I'm going to. Don't worry. Uh, that's where you can get all your, your updates. Uh, your videos are going to be delayed. What's going on? I have the internet again, so all videos should return normal pretty soon. Uh, and then also, uh, yeah, go to gamejolt.com slash world and uh, you'll be able to find us there. So you can find all that cool devlog stuff. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, goodbye, and remember to go see Black Panther. Bye.